I'm going to do a quick little lesson on what happens if we don't have a perfect square. Some of you have already used a calculator and maybe gotten to a point where the calculator, when you click in or when you type in the square root of 150 or the square root of something, it gives you the same answer or it gives you this weird number and square root number. I'm going to talk a little bit about how that happens. To talk about how that happens, I have the perfect squares up here. 1, 4, 9, 16. These are all numbers that if I were to take the square root of, let's say the square root of 4, that would be a whole number. Now, for the numbers I have listed down here, there is no perfect square. I can't take two whole numbers multiplied together and get these. So, I'm going to show you a way to break this down because this this is going to be used in that quadratic formula that we saw earlier and to simplify answers for quadratic functions. So when we look at a square root and we have a square root of number, when you want to break it down, the first thing you would do is look at the number and think to yourself or think about any perfect squares that would be a factor of 150. So instead of saying 150, I could break this down into two things. So I could take it and say it's the square root of, and I'm going to break 150 into two factors. Well, taking 150 divide that by 25. So if I take 150 divided by 25, that is 6. So I'd have 25 times 6 underneath the square root. 25 times 6 is the same thing as the square root of 150. Now, mathematically, you're allowed to take and break this up even more. You can take the square root of 25 and multiply that by the square root of 6. That's okay. That Mathematically, we are allowed to do that. Okay. So next, you can simplify each square root. The square root of 25 is 5 times the square root of 6. Now, just like you would have a variable, the square root of 6 acts as a variable. So if you were to write a number outside next to it, that means multiplication. So breaking one, the square root of 150 down Sometimes a calculator may break it down so it looks like this, if it's set to the right mode. But mathematically, or by hand, this is how we can accomplish that. So going over to 20 here, same idea. Break the square root of 20 into two factors. Pretty easy. One of those factors can be 4. So I could break this into the square root of 4 times the square root of, or the square root of 4 times 5 traditionally the perfect square is the thing that is always written first and traditionally the the number that the whole number you get after you take the square root is always written out front after i break that into its factors then you can split this into two square roots so the square root of 4 times the square root of 5. 5 can't be broken down anymore. Okay, so next I would take the square root of 4, which is 2, and write that next to the square root of 5. So that means 2 times the square root of 5, that's your final answer. If you're good to go with this video and know what I'm talking about, you can move on, or I'm going to show two more examples. Again, Square root of 54, break 54 into two factors, one of those factors being a perfect square. 
Uh, let's see, 54 divided by 8? No. Nope. 54 divided by 7? No. Nope. 54 divided by 9? Yeah. So 54 divided by 9 is 6. So you would have square root of 9 times 6. Break those into two square roots. Square root of 9 times the square root of 6. 3 times the square root of 6 would be your final answer. One more example. Square root of 448. Well, it's a pretty large number, so maybe it's one of these numbers that are in the upper half of these 10 perfect or these uh, perfect squares I have listed here. Let's take 40, 448 and divide it by 64, which is 7. Hey, found it. Okay, so this would be the square root of 64 times 7. Then you would end up with the square root of 64 times the square root of 7. The square root of 64 is 8. And then you would keep the square root of 7. This would be your final answer. You can continue on with the lesson.